Good morning, flying penguins and friends from all over the world. Okay, so this morning I was reading uh, online about Beth Moore, and apparently either a week or so ago, she made a comment that sparked online controversy and all this stuff. And what she said, I'm going to read the quote, and she said that, uh, the Bible is the word of God, uh, crucial to knowing him, but it's not God, right? <clears throat> she then says, we can study our Bibles till the second coming and leave God completely out. We can grow in facts and never grow a wit in faith or any in faith. And man, I could not agree more. Um, and, and people are going bonkers over this saying, oh, you, can, you, know, you can't encounter God any other way. But when I look in scripture, right? So we always gotta go back to scripture, the word of God. We see countless examples. And in fact, almost every Bible character, with exception of maybe Ruth, I would say, they all had one thing in common. They had a radical, powerful encounter with God, right? So let's take Saul or Paul, for example. That dude was a Pharisee among Pharisees. He knew the word of God probably better than anybody. And he even said that. I mean, he, he knew it back and forward. He was the Pharisee among Pharisees, yet he was a jerk, right? And it wasn't until he encountered the living Christ, he had an actual encounter. His whole life was radically changed, okay? So let me go, go back into a little bit of what, what she said. She said, do not be deceived. People who study the scriptures constantly and are continually mean-spirited, rude, slanderous, and aside uh, their religious rhetoric, uh, bereft, <clears throat> uh, bereft of uh, outward evidences of the Holy Spirit are having Bible study without God. He affects us. You can take that to the bank. I 100% agree. Some of the, the biggest jerks that I've met, unfortunately, have been within the church. And many of my unbelieving friends that I've talked to over many, many years will tell me they hate Christians. And she's pointing out almost exactly why they hate Christian because many Christians, because they are religious and they act and they quote the Bible, they thump you with the Bible, but they're jerks. I'm sorry, they're rude, they're jerks. And, and you get down into business and you know what? They're untrustworthy people. And... What I would say is that exactly what she was saying is that uh, if you haven't in actually encountered God, then, uh, man, it, it, I, you're missing out. Um, and the way I, I would say this is that absolutely, the Bible is absolutely the word of God. It's infallible. It is crucial to us understanding God. But that's the same thing as, as reading an autobiography about President Trump and then saying, I'm personal friends with President Trump. I know him, man, we, we hang out all the time. Well, that's ridiculous. Or like saying, I've, I've read you know, Hillary Clinton's autobiography, and man, I know her, we are best buds. And if I were to tell you that, you would laugh in my face because it just simply wouldn't be true. The fact is, I would know a lot about them. I might even be able to discern their character and kind of who they are. So that when I met them in person, I could say, hey, remember, you remember these stories that you wrote? Can you explain this a little bit further to me? The Bible's kind of that way. Now, absolutely, the Bible's the word of God, and it has to be our anchor for our experiences. So exactly what Beth is saying is that I have to study and know the word of God deeply and intimately. But if that's all I do is study, 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 and I have the word of God inside of me, but I don't really encounter him, I know for my life and I think for many others, I'm not really transformed. I've created a, a system uh, that <clears throat> tries to keep me from doing things and then tries to push me into doing other things. But it, it doesn't typically move me by itself because it's simply words on a page. But what, what the Bible does, it creates my anchor so that when I do spend time in the spirit or have an encounter with, with the father or with even his mighty angels or with Jesus himself, which 
does happen. And that is a common thing and should be a common thing for all of us. When I have an encounter or I hear, uh, hear God speak to me, either about someone or give me understanding and insight, then I, can, I have to take that back to the word of God as my anchor and say, okay, can I line this up with God's word, either directly, right, or indirectly with his character and, and who he is that's revealed in, in God's word? And so they have to go together. So I, the perfect thing really is that as I study God's word, right, that should inspire me and draw me into a deeper relationship with him which means then I get to encounter him. And yes, just as we see in scripture that I can go into the spirit and I can have a supernatural experience hanging out with Jesus. And that happens and I do that and I absolutely love it. And to be honest, I grow significantly more in those encounters with God than I do with a year of Bible study, strict, strict Bible study where I don't encounter God. Right? And I'm not saying you can't encounter God in the Bible. Absolutely you can. And you can encounter him through your reading. But if all I'm doing is studying just to know the, the Greek only and to be able to, to you know, slap somebody with the word of God or defend it, um, then I've missed the boat. Because it's not about my knowledge of Scripture that, that, is, that what God is, is after. It's about my intimacy with Christ and my encounters with Christ and spending true time with him, right? But they have to go together. So ideally, the more I study scripture and get that in, into me, then that should inspire me to say, hey, I want to do what those guys and men and women in the Bible did, right? Jesus says, you will do everything I have done and more. So ideally, the Bible should inspire me to say, I want to do that and I want to encounter and meet God intimately and personally, just like I'm reading in Scripture. So then that should inspire me to have encounters, to, to do things and put things in my life that, that uh, facilitate those kinds of encounters, either through prayer or through my worship or meditating on Scripture and envisioning in my imagination, which we'll go over that here in, in uh, a couple of weeks or a couple of posts later, we're gonna talk about the beautiful imagination that God has given us and what it's for. But as I encounter God supernaturally and I, it transforms my, my heart and my life, then that takes me back to scripture. It should take me back to scripture where I, I number one, align it and anchor it with his word. And then that inspires me then to have more encounters. And it's this beautiful cycle it should be this beautiful cycle where the deeper I go in the word, the more I encounter the Father, the more I encounter the Father spiritually and supernaturally, the more I am inspired to go read the word. And it's an amazing cycle. So what I would say is if, <clears throat> if you're one that's never encountered, but you, man, you study, 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 be careful because you can worship the Bible the words on the page, right? This, this guy, this is mine, and it is, it's, it's been torn to pieces, pretty much, right? And, um, but I can, I can worship this as an idol. So be careful that you don't worship this as an idol. Just like I could, I could put a cross up in my, in my prayer room. I could bow to the cross and actually make the cross an idol in worship, the physical cross. But the cross itself, the physical cross, like the wood cross that I might wear or even put around my neck, has no power in and of itself. It's just simply wood, right? But if I'm wearing a cross thinking it's gonna protect me somehow, that's ridiculous and that's an idol and you're worshiping an idol, right? So I would say be careful with that because it's easy to worship the words on the page or the, the actual Bible and make it an idol, which is actually not a good thing, um, and without actually encountering, because the Bible should be leading us into deeper encounters. But the opposite is true as well. If I'm one that I'm encountering supernaturally uh, all the time, or even, you know, if, you, if you're into to new age or, or whatever, 
um, and all you're doing is encountering angels and what you think is the is is Jesus or God or whatever, and you're not reading this word and you're not taking your encounters and your experiences back to Scripture and back to the Word and the character of God, then you are in real real trouble. And I've met uh, a number of people over over my lifetime that haven't have had such incredible supernatural experiences but they're crazy they're absolutely bonkers because they 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 can't distinguish the the supernatural from the natural and they're so ungrounded biblically that they are taken all over the place and they're crazy they're losing their minds because they're not anchored in the word so folks I just want to just encourage you that if you are, if you're in the word only and not really having those transformational encounters, experiences with God, um, then I want to challenge you to, to, to do that, to get, to start talking with people that are encountering the, the, the presence of God supernaturally, powerfully. They may be healing. They may be uh, having visions and dreams. Go talk to them. Get, get involved with that. Don't lose the word, but get stretch yourself that way. And if all you're doing is encountering, then I want to encourage you to get deeper into the word of God and study it, study it, study it. Don't lose your encounters, but get deeper into the word and have that beautiful relationship. So I am so excited for what 2019 is going to provide and what it, what it has in store for us. And I'm telling you, it's going to be an increase of supernatural encounters for you that will begin to transform you powerfully and it will make your your study of the word of god so much richer and so much more alive and vibrant when you do that so have an awesome awesome day and i can't wait to talk to you guys again bye, -bye.